Hello, and welcome to a special Preakness edition of the Pedigree Puzzle. I'm Jessica Tugwell, this is Trust the Prophets, and today we are going to talk about the Preakness field. The 148th Preakness is this Saturday, and everyone's looking forward to seeing if Mage can win the second leg of the Triple Crown. So I decided to go ahead and take a look at the pedigrees for all of the contenders. Note that this isn't really a handicapping exercise as much as it's meant to be an educational and entertaining look at the different ways that you can breed a Preakness Stakes starter. So to start, let's take a look at the full field. We have eight starters for the Preakness from the inside. We have National Treasure, Chase the Chaos, Mage, Coffee with Chris, Red Route One, Perform, Blazing Sevens, and First Mission. We'll start by looking at them from the inside out. First is National Treasure. He's by Quality Road and out of the Medaglia de Oro Mare Treasure. National Treasure was a $500,000 yearling. His dam, despite not winning in seven career starts, she was a $375,000 RNA at Keeneland September, which means that she had a reserve price of $375,000 on it and she did not attain that. She didn't get a bid for that amount, so they she went unsold. Uh, despite that, she was she's still been a very nice producer. She's got two two hundred thousand dollar plus earners in Treasury and Ultimate. Both of them are claiming allowance optional claiming type horses, but they were highly regarded as young horses and had reserves set at two hundred thirty five thousand dollars and two hundred forty five thousand dollars respectively. Uh, National Treasure also has a full sibling named Quality, who is currently zero for six. So there's a little bit of a mixed bag here with this mare so far. His second dam proposal by Mount Livermore produced four stakes winners in her career as a brood mare. And that's probably part of the reason that Treasure was so highly regarded as a yearling. National Treasure traces back to the mare Mine Only and is a member of family 4C. His fifth dam is also the tail female ancestor of grade one winners Golden Ticket, Dream Tree, Telling, well chosen, and Leo Frick. So it's clear that this is a pretty solid family when you dig back into it a little bit. Quality Road has from Family 4C Stakes Winner Park Avenue, whose third dam is mine only, Stakes Winner Original, whose second dam is mine only, Graded Stakes Place Carmel Road, whose fifth dam is mine only, and Stakes Placed Open Road, whose fifth dam is Mono, which is the dam of mine only. So clearly Quality Road has had some success with this branch of Low Family 4C. The cross of Quality Road and Medaglia de Oro has not been particularly productive yet. The only stakes winner in 22 starters is City of Lights Gaslight Dancer. But the Quality Road Mount Livermore cross has been a little bit more productive with two stakes winners and 24 starters. Uh, that being Lionite and City of Lights Lights of Broadway. Chase the Chaos will be breaking from post two in the Preakness. He is an interesting horse. He's a son of a Stern and was a $10,000 weanling. So he was not very well regarded uh, as a young horse. His dam, however, was. She was a $110,000 weanling and a $475,000 yearling. However, she did not really live up to that promise on the racetrack. Her only win came in her seventh start, and that was in a $10,000 maiden claiming race at Charlestown. This is her first full, though, so it's entirely possible that she will outproduce herself in, and she already has, with Chase the Chaos. His third dam was a stakes-placed uh, runner by Cure the Blues, who produced Millionaire Mr. Mardi Gras by Belong to Me. And his fifth dam is White Jasmine, who you might have heard a little bit about on the Derby Trail as... She has Disarm and Angel of Empire in, her, in the current crop of three-year-olds, tracing tail female to her. Other graded stakes winners tracing to White Jasmine include Sarah Louise, Scoop, Looking Cool, Softly, Conquest Big E, and Coraville Cat. From this family 26, Medaglia de Oro, the sire of Astern, has grade one Golden Slipper winner and Australian champion two-year-old Vancouver, as well as graded stakes winner Devil by Design, and Australian group stakes winner Tenley. His son Astern has stakes placed Witch Hazel from Family 21, which shares this B1A mitochondrial haplotype with Family 26. The Medaglid Oro Uncle Mo cross hasn't been tried very often, but it's 
been pretty good from a limited number of starters. In just 10 starters, there's this stakes winner, Chase the Chaos, as well as Bolt the Oro's Instant Coffee. Uh, Stern has been not particularly well received by the US market. He does have two grade one winners, but in 2022, he had 43 foals sold for a median of $20,000, and Chase the Chaos, as mentioned, uh, fell be below that as a $10,000 weanling. So clearly, Chase the Chaos is not necessarily a poorly bred horse by any means. You see great names like Uncle Mo, Medagolid Oro. Jumpstart is a really underrated stallion, in my opinion, on the bottom under the second dam. But clearly, he was not particularly highly regarded. And he's been kind of an overachiever so far in his career with now having a chance to contest the Preakness for his connections. Kentucky Derby winner Mage will break from post position number three. He was a $235,000 yearling and a $290,000 two-year-old in training at the Phasic Tipton Mid-Atlantic sale, which will take place uh, the week after the Preakness. His dam was a stakes winner and a half to grade one winner Finnegan's Wake, and his second dam was a stakes placed winner as well. I already went more in depth into Mage in the first edition of this series, which you can check out by clicking in the description. But one of the most interesting things to me about his pedigree is the fact that he is line bred to his mitochondrial haplotype. His family 5G is the D1B mitochondrial haplotype, and it is the same haplotype that both Big Brown and Big Brown's damn sire Nuriev come from. And I think that's a very interesting uh, aspect of Mage's pedigree. It's something that uh, Preakness and Belmont Stakes winner Fleet Alex also had as a member of Family 5G out of a mare by Family 5G's Hawkster. So I think that that's really one of the most interesting and notable things about Mage's pedigree. Coffee with Chris was the cheapest auction purchase of this field. He was a $2,000 yearling at Faze Tipton Mid-Atlantic October. But he there's still some things to like about him from a pedigree perspective. His dam was two for nine lifetime. Both of her career wins came for a $25,000 tag at Laurel Park. So she was fairly average as a racehorse. And you have to go back to his fourth dam to get to the first black type. Uh, she was a stakes winner in England and a half to a multiple group place stakes winner in Ireland. Her His fifth dam, Molly, was also a stakes winner in Ireland. The interesting thing about Coffee with Chris's pedigree is that his dam is line bred to female family 3L and the, specifically to the mare Lassie Deer, who is the second dam of Outflanker and of AP Indy. This is a pattern that has produced 27 stakes winners, mares inbred to Lassie Deer, uh, including two grade one winners, Vequist and Ida. Vequist's dam was bred on the AP Indy Summer Squall Cross. Whereas Ida's dam carried Lemon Drop Kid in APND. Most of the success of this line breeding is via the cross of APND and Summer Squall. And Coffee with Chris is the only one to date to have this pattern via Outflanker. So it's a little bit of a unique, uh, different take on that pattern, but it is still a pedigree pattern that has been seen quite a bit of success. Next is Red Route 1. He's by Gunrunner, who has been an absolute superstar with his first few crops to race. He's the first homebred that we're going to talk about in the field for Winchell Thoroughbreds. He's also a full to stakes winner Red Run, so you already know that this is going to work. His dam is a full sister to 2014 Eclipse Champion 3-year-old Untappable and a half to grade 1 winner Patio Prado. And his second dam, Funhouse, was also a graded stakes winner and a half to graded stakes winner early flyer in addition to two st stakes placed winners. His fourth dam, Carol's Christmas, is an excellent brood mare. She's the dam of grade one winner Olympio, graded stakes winner Call Now, stakes winner Your Call, and stakes place Carol's Wonder. Other horses that trace tail female to Carol's Christmas include grade one winner Pyro, Tapazar, and Cuvee, and grade one place creative minister who was third in the Preakness last year. Unsurprisingly, Gunrunner has pl had plenty of opportunity with this big Winchell family of 8D. In addition to the full sibling Red Run, uh, Gunrunner also has graded stakes placed Dream Like from Fun House, stakes placed Echo Again, and stakes placed Costa Terra, who both trace to Carol's Christmas as their fourth dam. And chances are this Red Route 1 will not be the last we see of Gunrunner with Carol's Christmas. 
in addition to this, from the same L3A1B mitochondrial haplotype as Red Route 1, Gunrunner has Grade 1 winners Cyberknife and Taba, as well as Champion Echo Zulu, Graded Stakes Place Running Legacy, and Stakes Winner Concept. Five of his six Grade 1 winners have come from the L haplogroup, and he himself is from the L3A1A haplotype. So it seems that he likes uh, to be brought back to his own mitochondrial line. For form, we'll be breaking from post position six. He was a $230,000 Keeneland September yearling, and although his dam was an 0 for 4 maiden, there's plenty to like here. Uh, as you can see on the bottom here, his third dam is Leslie's Lady, who you might know as the dam of grade one winners Beholder, Into Mischief, and Mendelssohn. He goes back to his seventh dam, Padalin, who is a fantastic broodmare, with grade one winners such as I'll Have Another, Nidal, Conte Partiro, Roanoke, A Phenomenon, Declassify, Marchside, Pleasant Stage, Seattle Meteor, and others tracing tail female to that mare. He also has line breeding to his own family 23B via Curlin's sire Smart Strike and line breeding to Good Magic's family 12C via Tricky Creek. The cross so far of Good Magic with Tricky Creek's third dam soaring, it's only been tried three times, but two of them are stakes winners. In addition to reform, he has Curly Jack, whose dam carries Devil's Bag in her pedigree. Devil's Bag, like Tricky Creek, is from Soaring as his third dam. The cross of Curlin with Tail of the Cat has also been pretty productive. From 36 starters, he has three stakes winners. In addition to Perform, he has Chaos Theory and Implicated bred on that cross. Blazing Sevens will be breaking from post seven in the Preakness. He was a $140,000 short yearling at Keeneland January and sold later that year at Phasic Tipton Saratoga's August sale for $225,000. He is one of the three good magics in the field and is out of a mare by Warrior's Reward named Trophy Girl, who was herself a $62,000 weanling who was two for seven in her career in maiden special weight and allowance optional claimer company at Turfway. He is the first foal to race from his dam, so we've yet to see what Trophy Girl is able to produce, but Wario's reward has been a pretty solid broodmare sire so far. His dam is a half to grade one winner King David and stakes winner Burt's Golden Missile. And though his second and third dams were unraced, his fourth dam was a group stakes winner in France named Hortensia. And one of the interesting things here is that his third dam is line bred to his family for J via her sire Stormbird. Both of them trace back to the 4J tapped root mare, Lady Lumley. The cross of Curlin with Medaglia de Oro has been solid so far with three stakes winners in 31 starters. In addition to Blazing Sevens, there's Golden Curl and Pico de Oro, as well as stakes producing sire Jess's Dream. First mission is the final horse in the Preakness field this year, and the second homebred being bred and owned by Godolphin. His dam was a winner in Maiden Special Weight Company at Tampa Bay Downs in her eighth start, and she comes from a really solid Argentinian family. First Mission's second dam, Forty Marchanta, was a multiple grade one winner and champion three-year-old in Argentina, as well as a half to a graded stakes winner in Argentina named South March. There are two other Argentinian grade one winners under the fourth dam, Marchand, who was herself a graded stakes winner in Argentina. What's really fascinating about first mission is the way his dam is bred is incredibly similar to Hall of Famer Rachel Alexandra. Rachel Alexandra was also by Medaglia de Oro and out of a roar mare, as well as being from the same family 1-0 as first mission and elude. Their most common recent ancestor is very distant. This family has been in Argentina for uh, over a hundred years, but there is a distant female ancestor that they both share. So that is really interesting to me that uh, the Medaglia de Oro cross, as well as coming from that same mitochondrial family and specifically from that same branch of low family one, family one O as Rachel Alexandra, who of course was a really good producer, even though she only had two foals. One of them was a stakes winner and the other one was the aforementioned Justice Dream, who has been a pretty solid sire, all things considered. The cross of Street Sense with Medaglia de Oro has three stakes winners and 20 starters so far. 
In addition to First Mission, there is Street With No Name and Tracksmith bred on this cross. So there's clearly a lot of precedent for First Mission to be a good racehorse, and he's living up to that. So that's the field for the 148th Preakness Stakes. Let me know in the comments what you think of this field, what the best bred horse is in your opinion. There's definitely some interesting storylines, even from a pedigree perspective, with half the field being from the Curlin sire line, uh, with three good magics, as well as one by Ride on Curlin. So that's something that's uh, quite interesting about this group. But let me know what your, your thoughts are, which pedigrees are your favorite in this group, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.